Hi everyone, uh, this is a ride along video where you come along with me and I build a website in Webflow. Uh, it's interesting for people that are new to Webflow to yeah see how the program works, people that are existing in Webflow, how somebody else does things. Okay, so I'll take you through my process. And um, we're not gonna cover everything step by step. Um, it's more of a, yeah, right along, me narrating my own life, which is a bit mad. Okay, if you are new to Webflow and you enjoy Webflow, you enjoy uh, this course and my delivery, you might wanna check out my Webflow Essentials course. Okay, there'll be a link for that in the description. But for now, let me show you what we're actually making. All right, so this is it. Uh, this is the mock-up in Adobe XD. Okay, so I've used XD because we've used Figma. And I guess I get asked a lot, like, which one should I use? And I just, I'm happy to use either. <laughs> um, so we're gonna build a desktop version, okay? But also a mobile version, because uh, we've done not as much mobile in this course. And for this particular client, okay, fake client, and the, you know, it's gonna be used mostly on mobile, but I'm gonna have to show you the, the kind of steps, like we have to go desktop first um, in Webflow and then build mobile. Yeah, and I'll just take you through my process. So, uh, because this is less of a tutorial and more of a ride along, uh, I'm gonna rant a little bit. Rant? I'm gonna try and narrate my own life, which is tricky. Uh, and it's gonna be a long one. So, how long? I have no idea. I'm gonna guess an hour and 32 minutes. Editor, can you put up the time? See if I was anywhere near close. 45 minutes, two hours, three hours. Um, it's gonna be what it's gonna be. Um, and yeah, it's gonna show you kind of the bits where I get stuck and how I fix it. I think it's kind of useful uh, to see, but you don't have to watch this. I give you permission to skip along. I'm gonna cover nothing new, just reuse the stuff we've learned in the course and kind of tie it all together. It might be useful. Remember as well that this is, is it the best way? It's the best way given the skills that we've learned in the course. In my opinion, there might be a better way of doing something that's totally okay. Leave it in the comments if you do know like, oh, why didn't he do it that way? And you watching this, have a read of the comments as well. It might be like, ah, oh, that's how we did it because I'm bound to get stuck somewhere along the way. Um, yeah, all right, let's get into it. See you in there. All right, let's get started. It's the morning, I've got my coffee. You can tell it's the morning. I had a look at that video they just recorded, and that's my morning face. A little bit <laughs> not wakey up yet. All right, so we're gonna start with, so this is the XD mockup. Like I said in the intro, I'm gonna have to do desktop first and then work through to mobile, and I'll show you my process for that. And there's no way at the moment that I know you can switch to be mobile first in Webflow without doing some super hacks. All right, uh, so yeah, navigation. I'm gonna start with uh, the normal navigation as in the component. I'm gonna kind of make this do my bidding because I love the easy switch out to the mobile nav. All right, and let's start. Let's start by coloring it. And um, I'm going to, often if the tag looks good, okay, navbar is a great class. I'm just gonna leave it and I'm gonna let it, um, let Webflow generate the um, class name. I'm gonna grab my colors from XD. I'll leave a copy of the XD file if you wanna have a look at it, if you know XD. But don't worry if you don't have XD or Figma skills, you can just be building in Webflow. All right, so the class, I'm gonna twirl these down. I'm gonna say a few of the shortcuts at the beginning here, just as a last reminder, and then I'm not gonna do it throughout the course because uh, an hour or whatever it is of shortcuts will both go crazy. Okay, so Option, Alt, click any of those to twirl them down. All right, delete you. That's gonna be that color. I'm gonna use it as a global color. Okay, I'm gonna use that Scott T, and this is gonna be my primary. Now, depending on if you're working for a designer or whether you're the designer, um, you'll see in this one, um, I've actually got a basic spec in here, so some naming. Okay, so this one here is primary three. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep that naming throughout. Okay, and just refer to that, because I'm gonna reuse it. All right, let's get our logo in. So here, I'm gonna upload it. I've got some files that I've got for the whole, I've exported them from XD. So, you know, I go through just quickly and I go and I find them. Okay, and I select it. And then I hit Command D or Control E on a PC, or you can right click it here in your layers panel and say uh, export selected. And I just picked uh, SVG, because it's scalable. Okay, um, and I've got some JPEGs I'm gonna use. I just went through and grabbed those. I actually ended up with two logos, PNG and an SVG. I'm gonna use the SVG, please. 
it's come in the right size, which is good. Now I like to do the alt text, the ones I know as I put them in, otherwise I never go back and do it. So I'm not gonna do it on the object, I'm gonna do it in the assets panel. Okay, so in here I'm gonna say that this is the uh, Scott T Ireland logo. Can't help myself throwing a keyword in there. <laughs> okay, I'm sure there's a few Scott T's around, I haven't checked. All right, so that should get the alt text. You can see alt text will come from the asset, excellent. Now this navigation has been built with things like float, um, not grid or flex, so there's different ways. Like instead of trying to get, you know, grid's great, you can get it stuck in the middle. If I was building this myself, I'd definitely build it in grid, but I didn't, so I'm just going to be cheap. Use the class that's gonna come from maybe brand, okay? And I'm gonna say just push from the top, please. And good enough, okay? Actually, it's not good enough. Let's go and grab it, apply down, there we go. So at the moment, I think the buttons are holding the, the size of this. If you get rid of these, the thing collapses. Um, okay, it didn't collapse. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the buttons that are keeping it this size, um, or maybe the nav menu, which is good for me. Um, I'm going to get rid of one of them. I'm going to rename, we've got browse uh, home and browse T. You browse T, okay, and I'm gonna style these buttons. Actually, instead of styling the buttons, I'm gonna put in my body tag because the buttons use this font called Inter, okay, and I use Inter as my paragraph text here. So Inter, and I got this one called um, Amatic, Amatic. So I'm gonna, those are Google fonts, okay, so I'm gonna go install those for the course. So project settings, I'm gonna to go to fonts. Okay, so I want Inter, I for Inter. And I'm gonna find it. Okay, I use regular and bold in my design. I know it because I checked it. Um, you can go and check your designs. Okay, and I want another one called AMA. There it is, Amatic. Okay, and there's only, there's a bold. I think I only want the bold. All right, so those are them two. I'm gonna jump back to the designer and I'm going to set up my body tag. So body tag, I'm gonna say all, everything on this website is going to be a font of that enter. Okay, and my default font size is, kind of looking for the most generic one, 16 of these. These are also 16, perfect. So here, maybe 16. And for the line height, um, actually we should use rems. Okay, so remember divided by 16 rem. Cool, so one rem. There you go. <laughs> okay, and this one here, I'm gonna use the, like nothing, like the, this is just means it's gonna be, normally, one of whatever that is. If that's 20 pixels, make that one in this hyphen, just means it's gonna be one of whatever that is. So my height is gonna be one rem. Sometimes it's 1.1, 1 1.2, 0 0.9, it's like a percentage of whatever that is. So I'm gonna start with one and just see how we go. You can see it's kind of working up here. And I'm gonna leave the default color as, actually I think the default color in, um, let's have a look, in Webflow is a, like a like a off kind of gray, off gray, just a lighter gray, slate gray. I'm gonna make it solid black because that's what the design says. And I do what the designer says. All right, um, that's good enough for now. And um, let's look at these buttons. So these are nav links, okay, in the nav menu. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a, I'm not gonna create a button class. Um, because the button, the generic button is this thing here. These things here are so unique, as in they're only used just there. I don't use them anywhere else in the design that I can see. So what I'm gonna do is leave button, because it's a really good name for a class, and I'm gonna call this one a bit more specific. And these guys don't share basically anything. They're both uppercase, I guess. Um, I'm gonna have two classes, I've decided. Okay, so this one's gonna be separate from what I'm gonna create later called button. All right, so there's gonna be nav, no, button nav, okay, the thing, the thing, and the thing that's a bit more specific. All right, and I'm gonna say you are white. Excellent, and I'm gonna say you are all capitals because half of them are capitals, and it kind of, it's good because say the client is gonna be working on the site, it means they can't put in lowercase and mess with my design. So when I go and add it here, we're gonna use the command enter or control enter, and we're gonna type in button, I have one means that it forces it to be uppercase. All right, other things. 
Um, it is clear, which is good. There's a lot more space in here. So what I like to do is space these out. Like um, if you click on something and you hold down the option key on a Mac, Alt key on a PC, and you kind of hover above something, you see it's a uh, 67. So half of that is 30, oh, 33. I'll do 33. So I'm gonna make sure there's padding of 33. So button nav has some spacing of 20. So I'm gonna make it 33 on both sides. And I'm just keeping an eye on it, like uh, in here in XD, I kind of like command one gets to 100%, and I kind of half line them up. Not perfect, but you can see if I toggle between the two, I can kind of go, oh yeah, I'm kind of close to it. And if you're thinking, how are you toggling between it? On a Mac, you hold down the command key and tab. On a PC, it's different. I think it's control and tab or control shift. Try a few of them. You might have to Google like how to toggle between open applications on a PC, but on Mac, it's command tab. I do that a lot between XD and Webflow. Sometimes I get confused which one I'm in. All right, so let's add this cart now. Okay, we did this earlier where we had some issues, but we know how to fix those now. First thing is, is if I go to add, it's not there. Why aren't you there? I can see CMS, but here is normally where the e-commerce stuff is. That's right, we need to convert this to an e-commerce site. It's gonna give me two collections, let's do it. Now again, this is just a free you know, you can get quite far with the e-commerce without having to pay for, you know, get it set up for pay. We can get this ready for the client beforehand. I'm going to close all that down because all I wanted it to do is to turn these things on. Hello, add to cart. Let's get you up there, remember, can't go in here, but it can go over here. Can't go in there. Oh, why won't you go in? Oh, I do that all the time. I think every single time I grab it, I grab the add to cart instead of the cart button on the cart button, they look so similar. All right, the weird layout stuff. So let's get it styled. Let's get it actually in place first. So we kind of worked out before that if I grab this cart button, or can I remember, we go to position, we can float them. So you can't do it to the button, but I think you can do it to the cart. You can, we can float them. So we haven't done much float in this course, but this navigation has been built with floats. So we're gonna to have to use what they've done. So I'm gonna float it to the right. I'm gonna get it on the other side, I do. Which in this case means in front of the menu, weird. Hey ho, uh, so let's style it now. Um, let's get it a couple of things. Now in my thing here, there's no number. I might go back client and say, you know, do you want the cart number? They just might have not have thought about it. Um, but let's just say cart quantity needs to be turned off. You can hide it because it's an option, but I think with the cart, you can actually just, it's one of the options under settings. So I've got the cart selected and hide when cart is empty and it only appears when, you know, it's being used. All right, um, let's have a look at getting the cart now I could style it to get this to be uppercase. Okay, it says it's uppercase here and it's not here. Actually, let's turn that off. There we go. Um, okay, I'm just gonna write cart because <laughs> nobody's gonna change this. I'm not gonna make it editable for the client. I'm just gonna type it in uppercase. Anything else? I'm gonna have to play around with this height and the color. So we're gonna have to add another color. So let's do that first. So I use my eye for, on the keyboard, use my eyedropper. Okay, I wreck my design but that's the code I want there. Undo. Okay, so I wanna say U button for cart. Okay, I'm not gonna add the style name because there's a good style name on here called cart button. And when I create it, okay, I'm gonna say background. It's going to be, I'm gonna type it in here. You can see it created the class based on kind of what Webflow thought it was gonna be, which is actually quite handy here and I'm gonna add it to be a global class. And this is going to be my ST secondary, and this was the third one as well. All right, click create. All right, now I need to play around with the padding. So I'm gonna do the same as before. Um, let's do spacing, and it was 33. Hold down the option key, Alt key on a Mac to get both sides, 33. And the top and bottom, I'm just gonna to match to what's in there. Nope, the line. There we go, nice. All right, everything's kind of lined up. And then you go you, just need to come up a tiny bit. Hi there, hey, a little interlude. I just wanna check on you, see how you're doing. Uh, and to see if you're enjoying the video, maybe give it a like. Uh, also subscribe to the channel. 
And I also wanna see if I could upsell you to the full course, okay? So what you've been doing now is just a small part of the larger course. And what you're seeing in front of you here is what's in the full course. Look at it all, look how fun it is. So if you do wanna upgrade yourself in Webflow, there is a card link in the corner or a link in the description to the course. It's called Webflow Essentials. For now though, enjoy the rest of the video and I might see you in the full course. All right, looking okay. Let's now go and see how badly it goes via mobile. What I tend to do is just do a chunk, like a section, and then go check it for mobile rather than doing the whole thing and then having to go back and do it. Okay, um, so tablet, fingers crossed everyone. Yeah, I don't think, I think there's enough room to actually, it doesn't need to change to the mobile on tablet. Okay, so I'm gonna keep the buttons open. So what you do is you click in your nav and there's some options under settings to say this one here, keep the menu icon, like enable it at phone landscape for me. So it should be there by tablet. Okay, and nothing here on, yeah, should be here like this. Perfect. And um, the one thing is when I get down to here, like I'll check that they're not broken on these ones. I know for this particular client that there's a fictitious client, but mobile first is the important one for this one is that a couple of things is down here, it's looking fine, looking fine. That is That should be white and this needs to get smaller. Okay, so to do it down here though, I have to do it wherever. Let's say I wanna do the um, burger menu. I have to do it first whenever it appears. I can't do it um, in portrait, I have to do it in landscape because it will flow down, remember. So this thing here, icons are funny. Um, some icons are just like images and you style them like um, before they come in. But this particular icon, you can style it with the font color, which is awesome. Okay, so Icons, an okay name, I'm gonna call it Icon Burger Menu, because I might end up with more than one icon. And you can style it with the font. So typography, I'm gonna pick white. Cool. And what I'm also gonna do is get rid of the word cart at this level. Okay, so I'm just gonna say cart at, let's find it, tablet. Cart though, I'm gonna say you are a layout of display none. And hopefully now on the mobile, there he is, okay. So one, I'm using the one, two, three along the top of my keyboard. One, two, I click off. One, two, three, four. All right, so I can play with the spacing. Again, I have to play with it at three, which is my mobile landscape. Just needs to be a bit smaller. So this one here is an overall, I don't know, it's that. <laughs> uh, it doesn't tell me its actual size. Oh, 18 either side. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can do that. The moment it's 20 and 32. So on this one, so I'm just gonna do 18 either side. Yep, but this thing here is kind of off to the edge. There's a bit of padding on that side, so I'm just gonna get rid of it. Zero. And it's not the same. This one here looks fine. There's just, everything's a bit different. Like that icon's a different height. And so sometimes there is just a bit of eyeballing to go. Actually, let's kind of just increase this to make it look square. Okay, and it needs to be a tiny bit taller. One, two, three, and four. Four, the one I'm really most concerned about. All right, so navigation almost finished. We're gonna click in here and go, you open up, show sure, please. Um, hide. Yeah, let's go and do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say you are going to be what? The design doesn't have it in it. So I'm gonna have to make some executive decisions. Is it gonna be green or is it gonna be brown? Another color. Um, so button nav, it's still the same button nav, which is interesting. Like, um, you know, the button nav is here, but when it gets down to this option, it gets kind of redesigned, another style applied to it. And I gotta do it to the landscape version because that's when it first appears. Okay, so you show, and you are going to be uh, on this version, a background color of that one, nice. Okay, and maybe, eh, what do I do? Do I make you the same color? Make you that color. You that color, you that color, excellent. Maybe it just stays like that when it drops down. All right, uh, Command Shift P, Control Shift P, and give it a click. Now, I'm reluctant now to um, leave it there because I want to go and check it on my mobile phone because checking it in the screen, mm, it's, it's all right on your desktop here like this, but it's better to check on your mobile phone. So I'm going to publish it. 
open it in a browser. And remember, uh, this might not be true for everybody, but you might just type this in on your phone. I like to use this option and go send to my devices. And I can connect to my Google phone and it just appears on here. It's pretty sweet. All right, looks good. The buttons look big enough. We'll have to check it with Google to see if Google's okay with the button size. Okay, um, okay check its accessibility. But it's looking fine. Actually, one thing on the phone though is, can you see that little line? I noticed that. Okay, so I'm gonna go U, just get a little bit, cover it up. Oop. All right, so good on mobile. Let's move on to the next chunk. So let's have a look at, what is it? So there's hero box here. All right, looking at the time as well. This is gonna be way longer than I thought, isn't it? You already know, don't you? Don't tell me. Okay, let's get our section in and let's work on this background image first. Okay, so I'm gonna go you. Let's add a container for it all. Basically all the rest of the site's in a container on all these pages, so. I kind of do that, just check, you know, is there anything that breaks out? Nope, they're all in a container, so I can do that. Clicking in here, Command or Control E, I'm gonna go section. Command return or control return. That's the last time, promise. Okay, this is gonna be my section hero. Actually, I wanted a container, didn't I? <laughs> okay, and new section can go inside. Cool, I'm gonna put a minimum height on just to hold, whoa, too big. Just so that I've got something to look at for my background image. Okay, uh, let's have a look. So the background image, if I look in here is, um, I'm reluctant to pull this out because it's actually a bigger image and I want a bit of like extra for the different sizes because you know that when we resize this, it'll get bigger and smaller depending on the browser width. So even though it's, I probably, if, I'd probably go and knock the top and bottom off it a little bit because there's quite a few bit of extra pixels that I'm probably not going to need. And it's going to be a big file size. But for the moment, I'm going to see, just see how this goes. So background image is what I want to do. So section hero selected, let's close this up. Background plus choose image, that one. I'm going to get it to cover and I'm probably going to get it to go from the center rather than the kind of top left. Kind of matches what I did in here. Nice. Okay, the next thing is putting this over the top. I can't remember in the earlier part of the course, did I add, uh, like, um, there's two ways of doing it. You can, clicking through all the buttons, you can add a uh, second in, um, colored blocks over the top, or you can add the effect. There's a filter called shadow, sorry, brightness, and you can lower the brightness. I'm going to just add two background images, but actually this is gonna be a background overlay. And can you see the difference is, um, this one's kind of like a greeny tint. Okay, these things will catch you out if you're not the designer. I know, cause I made it, that it's kind of not black over the top. There's this kind of hue to it. So I'm gonna grab you and I'm gonna look at the opacity. Can you see it's 80%? That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna go you and say, your color of that, and you are gonna be 80% of that. And that should match pretty well. Let's have a look, XT. Yep, awesome. Okay, I need to push it down from the top a little bit. So I'm going to do it to what? I'm gonna do it to the section or the container. It happens on the container there, there, and there. And on mobile, it kinda happens. Yeah, it's, it seems to repeat itself enough that I'll do it on the container. So actually, no, I'm gonna do it to the, not this, I'm gonna do it to the section hero. Nope, I'm gonna do it to the container. So container is going to have container. I'm not gonna do um, all containers, because I worry I'm gonna use container a few other times, and there'll be a padding on the top. Actually, no, we won't. I think of a better idea. So what we're gonna do is make a global class. Okay, so we're gonna say, I was gonna throw in a uh, div tag, and I'm gonna create a global margin class. This one's gonna be margin top of, remember I've got XS, SM, oh, SM. Okay, there's medium, large, extra large. Now, often when I'm doing a job, I have to write them down in front of me, what I've decided on. XS is eight pixels, SM for small is 16, then it goes 24, 32, 40. I, can, I don't know why, they won't stick in my head. Okay, so I write them down on a post-it note, right in front of me, right here. Okay, so I've got this lying around from an old job, post-it note, and I'm gonna guess that I need I'm not even gonna guess. I'm an XT. I'm gonna use this. I'm gonna hold down the option key and it says it's 20. So I'm gonna try and keep consistent, like uh, the designer here, me, pick 20 because it looked good. 
I'm going to pick 24 so that I'm kind of consistent with my fonts and my spacing. So I'm going to use 24, which is my medium. So in XD, sorry, in Webflow here, I'm going to say you are a margin of top, and you're going to be medium. Okay, and the spacing is going to be a margin of the top of that 24. And hope the designer doesn't notice that it's uh, not 20, it's 24. Delete you. Container is going to have a class of MT. Okay, so margin top and the medium one means I can reuse that medium top. We'll probably have to create, you know, like it, you might be at a point now where you go, oh, I'm going to make the excess and small and medium and large. I find every time I do that, I'm like, oh, I'm going to do this properly. I'm going to put them all in. And then I'll only use two. <laughs> and the jobs where I need, uh, you know, that I don't do it, I'll use every single one of them and I'll make them individually. It's like Murphy's Law. All right, so we've got a top on there. Let's have a look. So I need to break this into two parts. There's a few ways I could do it. I could use columns, could use flex. I'm going to use grid because grid is awesome. And um, I could convert the section hero to a grid over here. Where is it? Layout grid. And um, that's totally in all work. I like to just have it separately, mainly for my own like sanity. It makes it easier to find the grid and click on it rather than try and figure out which parent has a grid applied to it. That's just me. Okay, so I need two columns, one row. So two columns, one row. And the spacing I'll mess around with, but try and figure something out. It's probably going to be somewhere in between. It jumps, but you can actually type it in. Like, let's say that that's too much and 0.25 is not enough. You can just say, I want to be 0.35. Just mad. It's like, yeah, it's fractions. But they don't all have to equal one. It just goes, oh, I'm going to fill the gap. This is just filling the rest of it. Okay, so 0.35 looks about right. Let's throw the image in. And again with this image, I could export this from XD. Okay, already cut out. That would totally work. I prefer to put it in and then cut it, you know, put a border around it that's um, circular. In case I reuse this image, it means it only has to load in the website once. It also gives me a little bit more flexibility. There's no real, like you don't have to. You can just bring in the already cropped image. Okay, so I'm going to go and drag the image in. Okay, if you drag the image in, it just assumes you put the image tag in you know, the image element. Cool, I am going to put in my alt text. Okay, and here, I'm going to say you, nope, you are going to be cute hedgehog curled into a ball. Nope, you are going to be jasmine tea brewing in a glass cup. I think I like that, does it? Okay, and I'm going to make it, what size is it? It is 175 by 175 images. I don't want this to be responsive, so I'm not going to use minimum height. It's not going to get bigger because I'm not going to put more content in it. So 175 by 175. It's all distorted until I go fit cover. Q. Let's add a border, border of bazillion. I'm not, I always pick like a low number. I'm not sure like why I'm stingy with the pixels. <laughs> it doesn't cost you like any more to put a thousand in. I'm not sure why. All right, that's kind of it. Um, the spacing needs to be sorted out, but the cool thing about grid, which is easily clickable, um, you can say I want them all in the center, in the center. Okay. Do you notice how like grid is? Well, it's not doing the uh, you know the up and down. It's because grid it stops there. Can you see it? The blue line. You know the parent is bigger, but the parent does not pass on its measurements to the grid that's inside of it. He does what he wants. So what I'm going to do is go to section hero, find the size, get rid of it by holding Option or Alt click. And I'm going to go grid, you can be the minimum height of 300. Then grid knows how tall it is, so it knows that it can align uh, in the center. It's not far off. Let's get everything in and then I'll mess with spacing. Um, so let's get this, this, and this in. So beautiful T. It is going to be my heading. It is going to be my heading one. I just have a look around. That could be heading one. That's going to have to be heading one on this page, which is a problem. Um, I'm inconsistent with my heading. That's probably bad design. Okay, but I like it. That's a cool one. And I'm going to use this more kind of informational heading one, probably more often than the site. Now, my site's very small. It's only three pages. Your site's going to be a lot bigger. Okay, and I know that this is going to be the more usable generic one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to style all H1s to be more like this, because I know that the white on the black one is only going to be used this once on the hero page. I'm going to use that loads more. So what I end up doing is kind of just thinking ahead and going, 
I'm gonna style you first and then make a special exception, a little combo class to make you white. So I'll put my heading, uh, let's get it. I'm gonna just pop it down here, uh, heading. Okay, and I'm gonna say you're an H1. It's already the right font size wise. Let's have a look. You are going to be 51, random. Hey, designer gets what the designer wants. Okay, I'm going to say all H1s, which you'll forget to do loads. Okay, you'll have to go back and say, I want it to be 51, but I want it to be rem. So we're going to go 16, divided by 16 REM. And like before, it's easy just to go one hyphen, and it's going to be one, you know, the line height is going to be 3.187 rems. All right, and it's going to be the color of my um, primary three and anything else that it's got. So line height is pretty close, okay, almost the same. And there's no other things going on. It's not a case, so I think that's enough. So that's my good generic like stock H1, okay. So I'm going to use you now over here, but this one's going to have a class applied to it called text white, because I can reuse this a few times as well. And you are going to be white. And that's all the class text white's going to do. All right, next up is this one here. And again, I'm looking around to see if it's being reused. It's kind of my H2, okay? It's my heading two on lots of pages. So again, that is the more usable one. Like I'm using it there, there on the checkout page. So that's my default H1, sorry, H2. And then I'm gonna add the white text for it up here because it's a little bit more unique over here. So same thing, I'm gonna say you are going to be H2 and you are going to be that font, a matic. Size-wise, let's have a look. You are 43, you are 43, let's have a look. 43, 43 bold. All right, are you 43? You're 43 as well. Good designer, Dan. Okay, so I'm gonna say you are that, you're the bold, and you are 43, slash 16, rim, and you're gonna be a line height of one hyphen, and you are this font. Okay, this color here. What is this one? Yep. What is it over here in my styles? Oh, it's not even in there. I have to question the designer because we've used that one already. Maybe it's this one. Doesn't look like the right. Oh yeah, it's the warmer gray. Okay. So this one's called ST Gray 700. Grays, it's hard to call them one, two, three, four, five. You can, it's often, you can use this kind of same font styling. Remember that was kind of bold and that's light. It's kind of common to use it for colors as well. Um, all right, so you are going to be the color of, oh, okay, I need, oh, I think, what did I do? And the other thing to do is double check that, because um, I noticed that <laughs> this one, can you see the code is, you know, hash uh, 575 and this one here is hash 71a you're gonna have to go talk to the designer and like hey well, which one do you want i'm gonna pick this one because i'm the designer <laughs> i'm the idiot who made this i'm gonna pick that okay so let's uh, go back into webflow and i'm gonna say heading to oh i've done it to the wrong one on purpose to show <laughs> to try and show you like what not to do so remember we need to do it to all h2s you were probably pointing at it going is he doing it wrong he's doing it wrong so let's add a color first, because I've got that in my clipboard. Okay, perfect. Now I'm gonna go grab the name. Can't remember what it was. Okay, you, that one. Back to you, and you are going to be, that's what, when you toggle between the two, it kind of loses it. There we go, I'm gonna, that's my excuse anyway. So I'm gonna add it as a global class. I'm gonna give it a name. I'm gonna hit create. All right, that's there. It's got the right color now. H2 for all of them is going to be the medic and it's going to be, was it 43 divided by 16 rim? 16 rim. And it's going to be one hyphen. All right, so it's there. I am going to add it up here. Oh, well, yeah, it's going to break, isn't it? We know if I add it up here, because it's a grid, what's the grid going to do? It's going to go, hey, got a new thing. It needs to go in its new box. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab in here. I'm going to go add a div. That div block is going to be in this one. The heading is going to be inside of that one. And the heading, uh, 
It's tricky to do on page. Let's do it over here. So the white text is going to be inside him and then inside him. Here we go. Cool. So that div block is one unit so that it doesn't pop down into another cell. Cool. And this heading two, I'm going to add a class called text white. We're using classes. Nice. Let's add, let's first of all get them left aligned. So let's go into the, I want to grab the child of the grid, okay, which is this thing called div block here. And I'm going to get him to do what he wants. The parent says be center, but this guy says be left aligned. And it's kind of magic. It didn't apply a class to it to do it. You know, you kind of assume that a class will get generated because it does for lots of things, but the grid is slightly different. Okay, it's not actually applied to the element itself. It's to the grid. All right, let's add our button. Where are you, button? Okay, you. So, um, again, the button is like up here. This is the most reusable button. So this is going to be another unique button and I'll make this my generic one. So this is just going to be called button hero or something. So you, okay, I'm going to link it to nothing for the moment. That reminds me, there's a lot of like, whoops, did I do that? Okay, brand needs to link to, and uh, where is my drop down? So not nav settings, link settings. I'm going to say go to the page of home. But before I forget. This button here is going to have a class name of button hero. Button hero is going to do a few things. It is going to have background of none. It is oop, none. It is going to have typography of all others. It is going to say browse t. It is going to have a lot more padding. Okay, so how big is it? Actually, let's click that, hold down option. So you can see it is not equal. Good work, Dan. So about 27 by 16. Let's do that. So you need spacing of holding down the Alt or Option key, 27. No, wrong way. Eh? That's 16 at the top. 16 and 27. All right, it's the right size. Let's add a border around the outside. So border of what? Border here is a stroke of two. So you need not a radius, you need a width of two, and you need to be white. Toggle, make sure this is 100%. Toggle, 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 toggle. That is bold. That is not bold. This button, hero, is going to have typography. You're going to be bold. Font size is 16. My default is 16, which is one RAM. Now we're cooking. All right. So let's add some text and get the spacing right. So beautiful T to your door. So by default, the spacing, like it's weird, like H1s have some spacing. Okay. Like what's creating all that space in there. And um, I'm going to use the X-ray option. Okay, I'm gonna use a shortcut from now on. Okay, so in my case, it's Command Shift X. Yours will be Control Shift X. It's just handy to go through and say, oh yeah, the H1 has got a chunk at the top and a chunk of um, margin at the bottom. Okay, and same with the H2, there's a chunk there. What I like to do, okay, is just get rid of it early on in a job, okay? And just to say, you all H1s have zero. You can't put in, you can't reset it. You got to override it because by default it's 20 by 10 so you have to type in zero zero same with this one you are going to be all h2s are going to be zero by zero cool cool i'd rather just have that and um, yeah have nothing and edit myself cool so how are we going to space this out and uh, you can either add padding to the bottom of this one or i'll do that and instead of creating a class specifically for this one, I'm going to create a couple more global like margin classes that I could reuse. Okay, so MB for margin bottom. And how much of a gap is in there? It's a little bit tricky with this font because can you see it has like some, like the capital version of this. Can you see it's like, it's not even the A center, like, like the cap <laughs> is way high on it. It's a weird font. Okay, so my spacing is going to be a bit, a little bit strange on this one. But let's just go for instance, rectangle. Sometimes I just like to grab a rectangle and go, about that much. 
I'm looking over here, so the height is 14. And looking at my little list, 16 is probably closest to it. 16. I've, I'll make both the 8 and 16 pixel for the bottom, and then I can decide. Because can you see there, even though they're both at zero, they're both at different sizes from each other. Because this one's allowing some space for descenders. When I say descenders, like, can you see that hangs down the bottom? So it actually is really close, but the font is a bit higher. So there's, like, this is just, just uh, lucky that this one here has no descenders. Okay, weird side note, my name, Daniel Walter Scott, has no descenders, which makes it kind of easy to lay up on a line. <laughs> weird fact. So I'm going to add a div class, and I'm going to say you, uh, margin bottom, and I'll do excess, excess. Now for me, one of my big problems is now I go and do it. Notice it went away. You've got to hit enter, margin bottom, x, excess, is hit enter, and this one's going to be, extra small is going to be 8. Okay, and now I'm going to go and remove it. Still there, okay, but margin bottom uh, small. And I'm going to do 16. You should go through and do the rest of them. I don't. Okay, so you are going to be margin bottom. Well, probably this one here be small, and this one probably going to be the larger one. Margin bottom small. Oh, did I make margin bottom small? What did I call it? Yeah, there it is. And it's close enough. I don't really want to make one that says uh, a teeny tiny bit different. Again, because the client might come back and say, all right, we're using, you know, we're not using beautiful, we're using but beautiful. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to have to mess with the spacing again. For the moment, just gonna take a deep breath and just leave it like that. Let's have a look. Um, if you ever get a design from me, it's probably going to have rectangles all over the place because I've forgotten to remove them. <laughs> Anybody else do that? Use the old rectangles as a spacing tool. All right, that's all good. How tall does this actually need to be? It needs to be 343. Three. I just guessed at 300. So let's look at the hero section. Actually, no, it's the grid that is giving the height. And you can be that. All right, let's do this thing. Okay, uh, this, because it's in a weird place. How do we get things into weird places? Do you remember? You got it. We're going to put some, <laughs> I can't remember, position. Oh, it's in there. Come on, brain. Position, absolute. That's a good one. So um, where is it going to go? It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to be careful where I put it because I want it to reference. If I put it in here and move it across, on mobile, when I kind of move and shuffle these things around, it's going to end up in the wrong spot. So I want it kind of like, basically, it needs to sit above this, okay? That's its goal, you know, sit above this and don't move out around the place. So I'm going to put it just above this. So that, or just below this in the um, in the stacking order here, so that wherever this is or moves to, that guy will come with him. Does that make sense? So again, image. I'm going to go to my assets. I'm going to drag him in to underneath my, or just above the hero text. Cool. And I am going to. Is this decorative or is this something interesting? I think it might be something like it's not abstract it is something specific so we're going to go uh tea leaf uh, tea leaf graphic or tea leaf illustration it might be an iffy one like it's kind of just decorative but it helped describe the page yeah all right so you my friend are going to have a class called image called image tea leaf Okay, and I'm going to say position is absolute. Okay, and remember, whenever something is absolute, the parent, in my case, this thing called div block, needs to be set to relative. Now, in trouble with that, it's given it a class called div block. I'm going to use div block a lot, um, so I'm going to call this one uh, div hero wrapper. Okay, and apply relative to them. I might later on, if I use it, and I because relative is not going to do a whole lot to a whole lot of div tags. So I might just reuse it and call it, um, you know, what was it called? Div block. But hey, I can rename it later. So you are going to be in relation to your parent. Okay, I'm going to say you are, you can click these to see what it's going to do. Okay, it might get you where you need to be. Can you see it's bouncing inside of the parent? Okay, what I'm going to do is clear them all. Okay, and I'm actually just going to go you. I need two of them to do my bidding. Just over a bit. All right, I like it. 
Okay, so next thing is I am going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to, that spacing there, remember we can go to the grid, it's actually pretty good, like we can go to the grid and just open it up a little bit. I can't go and measure it because can you see the image here? If I measure it from here to here, I can't actually type that in here. So there's a little bit of just eyeballing it. Don't tell anyone. Good enough for me. I know it's meant to be a bit higher. Hey, let's just leave it. We can mess around that for a long time. I probably will. All right, now let's see how badly it goes on mobile. There's a bit of a crossing both fingers and toes to see if it all falls apart. All right, two, oh, three, four. Ah, okay, so what am I gonna do? I'm going to here just push that over across. So that's easy fix. I can say on tablet, you are going to be just a different size there. Done. Good enough. This one here, mobile landscape. Oh, not bad. I might just make the image smaller. Okay, so on you, you're going to be, I'm going to hold shift, hit my down arrow, 150 seems good. And when you get to this sort of size, you have to give it, like it's not, no mobile phone is exactly the size. You've got to give it a bit of a squidge to see like what's gonna happen. And it breaks down okay. And you, badly. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, let's have a look at my design actually. And um, so my design, it's quite different. Can you see the image goes away and it's kind of full height? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the image off. Okay, so he just called image, is he? It's not a good name for him because I don't wanna do it for all images. I want image hero. And you notice if you style him here, he'll be the same on all of them. He's image hero, image hero, image hero. Okay, if I left it as image, every time I added another image, it would follow the sizings and all sorts of stuff. So I'm gonna say you layout of none. Cool, weird. Okay, so you're pushing to the side. The grid is doing a couple of things. What is it doing? It's kind of stuck to this, ah, oh, okay. Because I cleared it off, it's jumped to the next one, okay, leaving the space over here. But actually on this, it's great to have two columns here, but not here at mobile. So what I'm gonna say is here is actually just gonna be one column. And I want it to be the full fraction. And I would like it to be centered. The thing is, if I, it is says it's centered, why isn't it being centered? I know why, do you know why? Why is it all left aligned? It's because the wrapper says to be centered, okay, but the stuff inside of that wrapper is doing something different. So what I'm gonna say is, dear div hero wrapper, I'm gonna make you flex, because flex is awesome, and I'm gonna go vertical, and I'm gonna say you all be in the center, and I think the gap is good, just the font size is gonna have to get smaller, and where is that coming from? Hmm, is it the grid? Grid goes to the edges. What is keeping this guy? Why, why has he got a little bit of padding on that side? Can't see it there. We're gonna to go to our super x-ray mode. Super x-ray mode, super x-ray mode. <laughs> Smashing all the keys. What's keeping him over there? That's not helping. All right, you wait there, I'll figure it out. To get it out, uh, I went and clicked everything. Wasn't sure how that was, uh, what was wrong. And um, so I just kind of work my way up. I'm like, this seems like the most culprit. And I kind of close this down and I look over here and I go amber, blue, 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 amber, amber. And I check all these things, what it's doing in there. What's doing, like I'm in here, I'm like, well, I'll flick that on and off, see if that does it. There's a little bit of that, okay? What I figured out was, there's nothing wrong with it. I went to the grid and looked at it and went over here and I was just looking and I noticed that the grid child, so this guy in here, um, is, actually it was to do with him. Can you see he's left aligned? Okay, and that space is only coming because it's left aligned and that if this was smaller, okay, that whole thing would be in, you know even more smaller. Okay, so uh, does that make sense? He's just left aligned, that child. Okay, so I'm gonna say you, good child, are going to be center in there. Whew, figured it out. And the other thing I wanna do is, it needs to be full screen. Anybody remember the measurement for like making it full screen? Okay, if you don't, it was, I'm gonna make the grid. At the moment, the grid height is just being a minimum height. Okay, so we're being grid is the size of, you know, minimum height of, you know, that 343. Three. What I'm gonna say is not that, I'm gonna say the height is uh, the vertical height. So I'm gonna say it is like 90% of the, um, not vertical height, the viewport height, that's the one I want. And it does something weird, like I've done 90 because I know I've got some a chunk at the top, I just guess 90. But it doesn't look very good here in uh, your browser. So go test on your phone, that is the perfect way. Or you can kind of fake it by just making this smaller. 
okay, and getting it like kind of the same size. Okay, and you're like, oh, okay, I can live with that. So you can at least design in here, but also just make sure you're testing on your phone. Send it out, have a look. So I'm gonna do that for a sec. There's a couple of things I need to do to this. First of all, you, I want it to maybe just break onto two lines like here. So I don't wanna make the font smaller. I want to try and get it to break. So white text here, mm, I don't have a class that I can attack, which is not good. So I'm gonna to have to give it a class of probably something so I can shrink. Oh, can I shrink the whole box? I can. This div hero wrapper I can make smaller because he's got a class. I just don't like adding classes to everything. Okay, I wanna try and be as minimal as possible. But this one here feels like I could say you have a minimum width um, of something. You can be a minimum width of, let's just put in 300 and see how it goes. Sorry, maximum width is what I want. So you can have on this device here, maximum width of 300 pixels, go smaller. Now it breaks onto two lines. And now it's left aligned, okay, which is kind of weird. Before it was automatically expanding, so it just was always in the center because I told the box to be in the center. Now that we're giving it a physical width, it's breaking onto this line and we never told it to be center. It just was kind of looking like it was center. That doesn't make sense then. So do I create a global class that says center text or I might just have to wrap this one up in a class. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get rid of this max width here and I'm just gonna have to cave and say, you've got another combo class called text hero, uh, h1 hero. Get messy already. Okay, so this one here is going to have my max width of, I can't remember what I put in, but that is not small enough. I'm holding shift and putting down. That's min width again, Dan. Come on, max width, too small. But he's also going to be typography of center. All right, so now I can use my up and downs just to see something like that. And again, I'm gonna go zoop, zoop to see whether if that's working and add your own sound effects. Okay, down here as well, this needs to shuffle across a bit. So I'm gonna say you leaf on this one, position is a little bit over, okay, one, uh, one, two, three, four, and it's kind of working. I need to get rid of the, uh, the spacing at the top there. What did I add it to? I added it to, can't remember. I added it to the container, didn't I? And on here, I wanna turn it off. Oh, what am I gonna do? On here, I'm gonna set it to zero. There we go. One, two, three, four. Ooh. Okay, again, I'm gonna have to test on my phone to make sure that kind of works at the bottom here. Okay, make sure it lines up. All right, uh, that is gonna be it. That is it for the hero box, I think. Nothing else in there. All right, let's move on to these guys. This is gonna be way longer than I thought. Okay, so I'm gonna put in this chunk down the bottom here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a section for these and I'm going to have a background color for it. Um, excellent, so let's do that. So let's go back to this one and let's add a section. It's gonna be inside my container. Drag it in, section. And this one's gonna be section product list. Okay, and it's gonna be inside of this. Oh, there we go. All right, this is going to be using my color here. Yep, gonna be that. Okay, and you're going to be the background of the, this one, edit, it's going to be ST gray 300. Okay, and what else we got? Let's put these guys in. Okay, so we need our uh, we need our list. Okay, so my products I don't have yet. So my products I'm going to import the products here. I've got them from the last when we were kind of like looking at it. So my products all. There we go. It takes a little minute for these guys to load up, depending on how big your list is. Mine's not very long. Cool. So I got my products. Let's add the product list. I'm gonna go close it down and in here, I'm gonna add the collection list. Okay, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna connect it to the products. I'm gonna make it three across. Probably gonna switch it to B. Actually, I'm gonna switch it to a grid. I do that very often, okay, instead of, so you switch it back to that kind of stretchy one. Okay, and then you say, actually, my friend, you are a 
now grid. Okay, and you will see that this collection list is not happy. They're all jammed in there. I think I've added the grid to the wrong wrapper. So I need to add it to the list. So let's undo that. So this collection list is going to be a grid. That makes more sense. They'll jump into these ones. All right, and you are going to be three columns and one row. Let's add some stuff. So add our image. So in here, let's add an image. Image cannot inside collection to add. Okay, click inside it first, then add it. There we go. Connect it to the main image field. Excellent. I'm going to add a, going to add a heading. It's going to be my heading two. Price, I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to connect it up, aren't I? Make sure you connect it to the product of um, basic name. Oh, problem. Designer designed a small version. I'm going to have to adjust that because hmm. we're all a lot longer. That happens a lot. All right, uh, let's put in our just a image, oh, sorry, a text block. We'll connect that to our price. Where is price? Price. Excellent. And what you can do is actually just type in afterwards. So that's connected to that. I'm actually, I want this chunk afterwards per 100 grams. So I'm going to do, what am I going to do? Actually, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So text block at the moment. Okay, I'm going to call him uh, text price. I'm going to make him inline. Okay. Because otherwise he's a block, right? Because he's called text block. He wants to occupy the whole line. So if I make another person, another person, another thing, text, text block, you'll notice that he wants to be underneath it. Okay, and this one's going to be slash 100 grams. Okay, so you can say to this guy, text price, you be in line. This person still wants to be a block. So I'm going to call this one text, I'm going to call him text price as well, why not? Okay, because he does the same thing, be inline block. I need some, do I have margin left? I don't yet. So, margin left x is not padding, it's going to be you, and you're going to be eight. So extra small, and you are going to have margin left, extra small, there we go. So the next bit of chunk of text though is this. So we're gonna go you, get in there. It's still another text block. It's actually paragraph now, right? Like I feel like that's now qualifies as a paragraph because it's gonna have information. So I'm not gonna put in text, I'm gonna put in paragraph. Connect it to the paragraph field. Okay, now the client hasn't given me like a summary option. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is have to go back to them and add a summary option. So I'm gonna grab a bit of text. Let's say it has to be three lines because that's just what we've got space for. Or work out what your minimum character is. I'm just gonna use this much. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go into the product and say product. You need a new field, not in the actual product itself, but in the kind of like global product setting. I'm gonna say you need a new field and it kind of appears at the bottom, which is weird. Um, you're gonna have a new plain text field. It is going to be multi-line when they're putting it in there. The label is going to be summary. Okay, and we're gonna have like a minimum uh, minimum amount of characters. Um, I don't know what that is yet. Okay, I'm gonna to have to play and test it, but I'm gonna to have to go back to the client as well and get them to, as part of the process, see if we can get a summary going. Somebody's gonna to have to make it. Cool, so that's that. Save the collection. I'm gonna go into them now and say, where's my summary? Paste, save, must be at least, whoops. <laughs> okay, actually we're speed changing that. Okay, so I changed it from minimum to maximum. So now we should be able to save. All right, so I'm just gonna work my way through these ones and put in some placeholder that looks vaguely different. Okay, so now I can go back in and say, actually, you're not that, you are connected to the summary field. Summary, better. All right, what else do we need? We need our button, 
Okay, and let's add a button. You. Okay, remember this one's slightly different. You've got the purple one, but this is only when you've turned it into either a CMS, okay, or an e-commerce site. You get this purple one to say, choose the current product. Okay, it knows which uh, box it's in, okay, and it knows that it's this sweet cinnamon black tea. So it's gonna go there. All right, it's all in there. I need to style it now. So let's do that. I'm gonna wrap it all up in a div. I could use the collection item. I don't exactly know what the collection item does. It has probably some special powers. I'm just gonna dump a div tag in there and just throw everything inside of it. So you just dragging it all to the right. There we go. So I can say div block for you, do a couple of things. Let's have Some spacing, I'm going to say the collection list. Actually, the whole section is gonna have some padding of, I'm gonna do margin, I think it's 24. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go check actually what the designer did. Hold down option, 30, bad designer. 32 is gonna be it, so we're gonna use 32 because that's close enough. So 32 production, section list is gonna have margin of all of them. Hold down the wrong one. Hold down shift, Dan. Okay, 32. And I'm gonna make sure that the grid, okay, which was applied to the collection list is going to have 32 as well. Actually get inside the grid and it's gonna be 32 by 32, even though we don't have rows, I'll stick it in there. All right, so that's the kind of spacing sorted. Let's add a white background. And I want it to the whole thing. Oh, white background to the bottom bit, because there's a drop shadow. So this is gonna get messy. Oh no, they're all in the div block. Excellent, not messy. So background color, white. Let's add a drop shadow. What I'm gonna do is add a global drop shadow so that I can use it on other things. Okay, so I'm going to add a div block. I'm going to call this one, uh, I'm gonna call it div shadow, because I'll have a text shadow probably. I'm not going to probably, but there you go. That's the way I do it. You're gonna have effects of box shadow. And let's have a check what we got here. So this one's got a shadow of 036, 16%. I'm not gonna remember half of that. So it's straight down by three. Um, it's kind of different here in, um, in Webflow. They kind of have this dial. They don't have X and Y coordinates. So 180 is straight up and down, perfect. Distance, says it's gonna be three pixels. Okay, that's the Y. And the blur was three. Oh, I'm remembering all this. Okay, the color was 16. I'm a genius, that never happens. Okay, so that's my shadow. I'm gonna apply it to see whether it's actually looking the same. So this div block here is gonna have um, shadow. There we go, div shadow. It looks pretty good, what do you reckon? It is pretty the same, because it's the same code. I'm not sure what you were wondering. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're expecting, Dan. Um, my, oh, okay. Did you notice it? I didn't notice it till now. I was like, where's that dark color gone from? It's because I put in padding, didn't I? Not, I put in margin, not padding. So this wrap around the outside has 32, but it's margin. Margin pushes away from the outside and padding pushes from the inside towards the middle, so that's what I want. I'm gonna clear all of these. Okay, I'm gonna make them. Hold shift. Okay, I'm gonna be 32. Better. Okay, how am I gonna do the padding on the inside? I can't do padding because the image, like on this, the one where I got the drop shadow, because I need the drop shadow to be on the outside of the image, but if I add padding to it, it's gonna end up breaking it, right? If I got this div block and I add padding to it, it's gonna work, but it's gonna push the image in. And I might just <laughs> do that because it's easy. And hope the designer doesn't notice. He's gonna notice, I know the guy. Handsome, but he'll notice things like that. Okay, so div block, I'm gonna need another div inside to wrap all these up. Okie dokie. Um, so let's go, let's add a div block there. And you can get in, and then you go across, you go across. 
and you go across. Okay, and then div block, I'm gonna add, it's got a class on it. So if I create it now, it's gonna create a global class. So I'm gonna do a margin all of, what do I need it to be? It's roughly about, you, 21. So I'm gonna use my 24 or 16, I'm gonna have to check. So I'm gonna go div block, margin all, and this one's going to be, I have to do probably test. It's margin all small. Actually, I'm doing padding or margin. Does it matter in this case? It doesn't. I'm gonna do padding all because I'm more likely to reuse a padding all. Okay, and I'm gonna make this uh, not negative and don't do margin. <laughs> Hold shift and I can look at it, can't I? I don't have to guess. I'm trying to get it at 16, it's tricky. I think that's better than 24. 24, I'm just gonna run out of room. No, 24 is nicer. So 24 is my medium, not small. So you're gonna be medium. All right, we're getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. Uh, I'm gonna have to add a combo class to this to say heading to, uh, so text list, I'm gonna call it product list. It's actually gonna have to be smaller. Typography, I'm just using my down arrow until I get them. I'm happy for it to break onto two lines, but it just can't break onto three. I'd now go through my database and just check what the longest name is. And then I might have to reduce what they can type in, in the database, okay, or at least in my products list, because it can't be too long. It'll wreck my website. All right, this one here, I'm gonna say, you need a margin bottom, what have I got? Can you start to see how useful it becomes now? Cause you're like, oh yeah, I can add that one now. I've reused it. Margin bottom seems stupid. You might still not like it. <laughs> you might just prefer to, you know, just style everything with its own style. That's totally cool. All right, let's give these guys a minimum height. Div block, why not? Uh, size, minimum height, minimum height, minimum height. Uh, okay. And I want the button to be on the bottom. Who remembers how to do that? Oh, there's a, oh no. Man, sometimes I get like, actually I want that to have the minimum height. So not you. Get lost in our own divs. Here we go, minimum height is going to be too much. Shift and down arrow. That's probably gonna be enough for them all. We're gonna have to check through all the different ones in terms of how many, uh, how many lines this is uh, to see how far it pushes the button down. So how do I get the button to the bottom? You know, div tag, can be uh, flex, flex goes crazy, vertical, grab this bottom one and say you are, does it have a class? It doesn't, I, I want a button class on it. I'm gonna put a button class on it first and then get it to push to the top, have another class. So ignore pushing it to the bottom yet. We should go flex, actually no, we can do it because it doesn't need a class, does it? Flex child. Let's have a look. XD needs to be margin top auto. It is a class. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove that because I wanna style the button first. Let's have a look. So the styling here, uh, yeah, let's do that. So I'm gonna have a little look. You holding my, so it is 14 by 44. 14 by 44, okay. So you, my friend, are going to be a button, which I'm not gonna apply that to it. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna turn Flexbox off the parent just so that I can style the button on its own. Cause I'm gonna use it all sorts of places. So button friend, are gonna be called button. Do you have any classes applied to him? He doesn't. So I'm just checking for blue. So there's not, so we're gonna get a spacing. What was it? Can't remember 44. I wanna say 44. We can check in a sec. 44 and Hold down your option key, 44, and then something, 14. 14, sometimes holding my option key down doesn't work, I kinda of hit it twice, I'm not sure why. Cool, 44, this button's gonna be called, what was it gonna say, it's gonna say view. So it's gonna say view, view even. Okay, and I'm gonna use button that's gonna have a background color of my, there we go, and I think there's some rounded corners on this one. So this one has rounded corners of 
Four. Okay. Four. And quarters of four. Nice. All right. So that's good. There's a drop shadow onto it. So I kind of reuse that shadow. Actually, what? Oh, weird. Where am I? Oh, did I leave that down there? Did I? I did. Whoops. Shadow. Dev shadow on the button. All right. Uh, so now we're going to get it to stick to the bottom. So my height's still probably not enough. So the minimum height for that PA pad. Oh, you're right. Okay, so I want to, don't want to style that. So I'm going to remember PA, PA mid. I'm going to remove that class. I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to remove that class because I don't want to style that. I want to uh, add a class to this div block. And this is going to be div uh, list uh, div product list lower gray namings okay and it's going to have a minimum height of 350 way too much hold shift use my down arrow and just get it so it's big enough for them all uh yeah to be the same height actually why is that guy a little bit smaller oh it's the image nothing to do with that here you go i thought Maybe I don't even need a minimum height. I thought this was shorter because it wasn't pushing it out enough. It's the image. Can you see I just happen to have images that are a bit shorter. So let's add our uh, PA to this. So I've only got one PA. It's padding all. And I'm going to make the button stick to the bottom. So let's make the height bigger so we can kind of see what we're doing. Let's go back to you. Minimum height, a bit higher big for obvious sakes and now this guy can be so is his parent six it's not so his parent of the div tag you got to make sure you go back to the one i don't want to keep adding flex to this pa okay from a padding wall because that's not a very good use case and i want it to be on this and i want you to be you yep. vertical perfect and i want this one here to, I'll do this one. Doesn't matter if you style this one or this one. I want the height of this button here. First of all, actually, I want it to be flex of. You can just align to the left. Is that what I've done here? No, I've lined it to the right. Now I'm styling div shadow. Hmm. I'm going to need a special button class for this. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to call. So this one here has a button class of. Special one. It's going to be button product list a little bit more specific and you are going to be left and you are going to have a top margin of auto so it sticks to the bottom nice there was a lot of work for that and i don't want it to stick to the left i want it to go that way and now these images so uh let's say that this let's have a look at what we've got here so we'll just copy the design it's quite thin in here so i'm going to go you're going to be a height of one two three Okay, so this box here, image, is going to have a special image class. What have I got? Hero T leaf. This is going to be image product list. And he's going to be a height of this. The width can be 100%, so it fills whatever it's in. And I'm going to do a fit of cover. And now they're at least the same height. Actually, still not. Still the minimum height. It's not quite enough for this one. Can you see just a teeny tiny bit off? Yeah, so I'm going to say minimum height of this guy is going to be just one more. A couple more. All right, text price. That lost it, so I'm not sure when it lost its... Uh, so, oh, look at that. The Because I made the thing flex, it won't do inline block anymore. So, because he's a child, can I make him just float to the left? I can, but this guy won't do the same. Hmm, I have to come back to you. Flex is kind of pushing them to their own level. I might have to put them in a div tag. That's probably the easiest solution right now. If you can think of a better way, let me know the time and the better way of doing it. Because this might be cheapen. Okay, and my text class is going to be bold. Bold, bold, bold. All right, so we're getting there. Let's now check it on mobile. Everybody, you cross your fingers, I'll cross mine. Survivable? Probably not. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have to increase the minimum height again. So I'm actually just going to switch this down. I'm going to grab the uh, 
grid. It's the grid child. The actual grid itself is going to be. Can I see mine? Come back better. Um, can actually drag it out. There you go. And I'm going to say you on this one are going to be just two by two. Get rid of one. Okay, I'm going to end up having more. Maybe not on the home page, am I? Let's work out the filtering later. Let's get the layout, dude. Just work on one thing at a time, Dan. You look good and mobile. It's going to look too squeezy. So remember, it's going to look more like that. So it's probably going to look more like that. You better scroll down still. Then here you can go. Yep. Collection item, you. And you're going to be two by that okay nice that will be good uh, again i have to test on my phone but you can't see me test on my phone so it's not very exciting i'm just going to go that is good for now <laughs> that's good for now all right um is that my home page done probably not uh let's have a look so you versus you that 100 percent at 100 percent this one here i'll probably put a height on it so that keeps everything lined up but i guess i don't want to get too much in the weeds i want this video to keep i'll tidy some things up at the end so um i think i'm happy that's good enough for the home page let's move on to our next page so you're still with me you're still awake wiki <laughs> wiki wiki i'm awake uh okay so let's do this hopefully yeah We've got some of the uh, stuff here to start building this. So let's go page two. So this is going to be our uh, product list. And it's going to be our product page. We're not dealing with the template yet. We're just going to create another page. And let's go you. And we're going to say this one's going to be product. Product list. Product. Product list. Or product browse. Browse. That'll be fine. I should fill in my meta title and description right now. I'm not going to. Okay, nothing on this page. Let's switch back to home page. Let's grab my nav bar and convert it into a symbol. Good idea. Nav. Back to the instance. Back to this other page. And let's go and add this on. Nice. Now, what I like to do is duplicate this um, so I can see two pages at once. You can't edit in both of them, it won't let you. One of them will be a read only. Like, can you see there's nothing on here? I can jump through the pages, which is cool, but I can't edit in the second version. So often what I do is just move it over here as a reference so that I can kind of be on this page and see what I've done on this page. Because otherwise you end up having to reload it every time. And every time you reload a page, your undos go away, which is a pain in the butt. So you, what do we got? Um, I wish it showed you your navigator, even if you couldn't uh, edit it. Okay, just, it's not there. All right, so we need a container. I don't think we styled that container. Okay, and we added a little bit of stuff at the top. So what did we add to the top? We added an M, it was medium top, and it was that one. Okay, let's add a white box. Do I add a box at the top that is just white, or do I add a box that's everything white, and I make a box on the bottom that is gray? Very good question. I'm trying to think which is the best. I'm just going to do a top section. I feel like I might reuse this. What I really want to do is move that down. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's make this thing. We can reuse it. So this is going to be a section. Section, and it's going to be called uh, section heading. Because I feel like I'll use that a few different times. Okay. Um, not, yeah, I feel like I will. Um, so that's going to be my section heading. It's going to have no color in it. Actually, my whole website has a color in it, doesn't it? So let's do that. So the body needs to be this color. Okay, my 100. So let's go back here. I'm going to go to the body, all body tags. And I'm going to say the background is this color. That color there is going to be added. And this is going to be ST. Gray, is it gray? Or gray? Anyway, uh, I'm not the man to ask. Okay. So it's going to be the background color, and it means that this section hero has to be white. Has it messed with my homepage? No, nope. that's kind of how I wanted it. 
Uh, this one here, section background, it's going to be white. Um, why isn't white a uh, global color? It could be. Just, I don't know. I don't feel like there's ever a need for full black, full white. They're easy to get to, and you're unlikely to change them. Unlikely, probably a kiss of death, but let's go in here. Let's go. Don't hit Command R. <laughs> It's right next to Command E. Have you done it before? Control E to add things. That's the reset button. It resets the whole browser. That is annoying. Uh, all right, heading one, ready to roll. I need some padding in here. I'm using 32. So section hero, I'm gonna add padding. I've got a medium and medium is 24. So let's make another one for padding. Uh, padding all, and this one's going to be large, LG. Just write large. <laughs> yeah. It's just common rot. Lots of other frameworks to use LG, SM, XS, all those sorts of acronyms. So padding all the way around, hold shift 32. All right, there you go. So this section, not the heading, actually it wouldn't matter, is going to be PD, I'm going to use LG. Is that what I called it? I didn't even do it, did I? I do that all the time. Okay, so I'm going to undo until it was back. What did I create it? class with it on you see me not hitting enter all the time pd it's annoying for me too enter then enter mm. now we get 32 hold shift now it should be done nice all right section up arrow to grab the parent pd launch cool i think i'm using a different font color i'm using i think the second one in there so i'm gonna have to go back to the headings I don't think it even has the second color. So that one there is going to actually be all of you guys. Going to be a font of primary three. I haven't done a primary two is what I want. So I'm going to do yep. There's that one. Let's make it a global cast and let's call it st primary two. So I've got a three and a two now. Excellent. All right. Find your beautiful team. Let's put in that region. This thing here, should it be a section? It could be easily be a section. Region section or should it be a div tag? Oh, it's not really big enough to be a section. Don't really know. I'm just going to make it div section. I feel like it's... Mm, oh, oh. Let's do something then. Section. Okay, section cannot be nested inside each other. I don't want it inside each other. It's going to click on the body. Section, a class called section, section, this is going to be region. Cool, it's going to be inside of my container. Okay, and it is going to be a height of, actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the text open it up. I like to do that sometimes, then I don't have to like try and get that in the middle of it. Okay, what I can do is just say be a bit higher and lower than this text. So I'm going to add a text block. Is that a heading? It can be. So one, two, three. Just looking at all the pages. I don't have many other pages, so it can be a three. So this is going to be in here. Heading. This is going to be three. Style all the threes to be. I plan on only using this in here. So it's going to be you, bold. Um, the text in okay what size is it 16 should be the default bold you 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 and it is white and caps okay so heading three is going to be 16 i'm going to remove the or remove it for now zero zero we can add some maybe not to the heading yeah to the heading. so section region Actually, we don't need a section at all. Watch this. I can put heading three in. Let's just do that because I'd probably leave the section in there, but I want to show you that this heading three gets used for one purpose, this whole block. So it's going to stay block, which goes all the way to the edge. It's going to have a background color of background color of that one. It is going to have typography of this one. It is going to have some spacing padding of 32 to match everything else okay and i'm kind of happy with it it's all caps i use a lot of caps in this um we overuse caps 
Yeah, it's rendering the font slightly differently. The bold feels more bold on here, but hey, it is what it is. It'll render on all sorts of different browsers, slightly different weights though. And in terms of the height, I might just add a tiny bit of padding to the top and bottom and call that good. All right, so another section and it's going to be this chunk. Okay, so this is going to be my list. So another section. Mm -hmm. You having fun? I'm having fun. I like making stuff. I like it when it's not going as badly as I like you guys watching. I assumed it would go a lot worse. So it's going to have the background color. I don't have any background colors. Let's just call this one section. Section, and this is going to be our product list. Okay, it's going to be product on our browse page. That's how I'm calling it anyway. Products on browse page. And this is going to have a background color of it's the 300 it is here and let's add the padding all for large i added that to the body <laughs> okay i'm gonna go padding large okay and let's grab my list you can copy and paste lists i can't do it this way because i can't grab the whole thing okay or can i use my up arrow this wrapper can i do it this way I don't think so. Oh, they removed the binding. So I can live with that. Can I bind it again? So you are going to be connected to back to being the products. Hmm. Did it get rid of my No, that didn't work. So I'm gonna try that again. I'm gonna undo rather than delete. Because it brought me other junk along with it. Let's see. Uh, this I'm pretty sure this works. I can grab it all from here. Go back to here. Back to my product browse. Oh, cool. So um, I'm going to use the same list. There's a few classes. I've got to be careful not to wreck over there. So I'm going to have to change some of these classes. You gotta decide whether you, you know, it's gonna save you time by copying and pasting it, because we're gonna to have to edit it to look like this, right? So maybe it's not actually as fancy as well, as clever as I think. Let's have a look. So you, 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 let's go, first of all, change the grid. Actually, don't change the grid. I want to say the grid is going to be, um, actually grab the list and the list. Oh, where's my grid? That's why I like to keep the grid. Oh. You do edit it. Layout. There you go. Hiding. It's going to be one by auto. Okay. And then here, I'm going to grab the div block and the div block. Ah, uh, I feel like if I go and change this, I'm, it's going to be too hard to kind of remember what's going on the other side. So I'm just going to have to rebuild it. We can rebuild them. I'm not clever enough to make everything I do over here work on the home page as well. So it's easy enough just to add a div block so I can style things, add an image, image. I'm going to add a heading. I'm going to add text block. And add another, I'm trying to remember what's on the other, you know, what's on the list text block. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So image, heading, text block, text block, another text block and a button. So before we go and style them, we can do that, that, and let's add a button. Cool. Wrong shortcut, button. Cool. This is gonna to go to the current page, that is current, current product. You, I'm gonna link to the main image. You are going to be, first of all, an H2, and you can get it from the name of the product. You are going to be getting it from the product's price, 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 price. Okay, you are going to be just the text box that says you per 100 grams. You are going to be the description. Okay, this is going to be the full description or still a summary? The still a summary. Actually, it depends, right? If it's not that long, what do we got? No, still gonna be summary. 
depends how long the summaries uh, descriptions were, I guess, right? But I don't want to limit whoever's writing this to the summary to stick within that little list. It's better just to use the summary, right? Cool. Let's make it happen. So let's grab the whole parent and make him flex because you know, like default, we always go vertical. This one actually is quite handy for this way because I want a lot of the stuff in the middle. So you are going to be very small. So you are exactly, how big are you? You are not square. Whoops. <laughs> Let's just pretend it was square. So I'm going to you going to be an image on this page. So you image, what else have I got? I got product list. There's going to be product browse. And you are going to be a size of width by you. And I'm going to say fill with cover. Excellent. And um, let's have a look. So you and you. Kidding. I'm going to put all of them inside another box. Actually, I want a grid in here, don't I? I could use flex. Put another one in here and flex it. Should we just do that to show you? Grid's easier because flex only has alignment top and bottom, which is going to work now, is it? Let's just keep going with the flex. So you're flexed in there. I'm going to, you're there. I'm going to make another div tag here. Okay, div. You are going to go inside. I'd love to be able to select more than one, like oh, shift click all of these. I'm not sure why we can't. Can't even get it in. You, once you get the first one in, then the rest of them are more likely to go in at the moment. Seems to, the way that they make this work, so they seem to be working on it in um, at Webflow and it seems to get better and better. I haven't quite nailed it yet though. So div block in here, you're also going to be flex. So you can flex a flex. You, horizontal, no, this one's vertical. It's lining this way. Just to find the center. I want gaps and rows. This one can have gaps and rows. So the parent one here is, the gap, the rows, let's put in 32. That didn't work. <laughs> or you and you. Oh, gap. I want gap, not you. You need to be you. All right. This one here, the parent, up arrow, is going to be rows of too much. Use my down arrow. Cool. What have we got? So you are the right kind. You need to drop up there. Oh, I'm going to have to put these in a div as well. Hmm. Because remember, flex won't let the uh, be inline block. So actually, I just want this to be a grid because grid will let me do that. Hmm. Don't do flex. Okay. So what I'm going to do is get rid of flex. Now you are, what div block has layout? You, you, you also need to be bold. I'll ignore you for the moment. You can have text block three can be in margin left, extra small. Oh, I liked all the padding though. It came with Flexbox. What to do? You wait there. All right, I like too much of the flex stuff to be, I'm going to put in a, and I'm going to put in a div tag. I'm going to wrap it around. I feel like this might not be the nicest way. If you're looking at it going, well, why doesn't he just do that? Probably should. I'm trying to think. So you are going to go inside you, and you so go inside you. So that, I remember back at the, home page, I was able to do that, right? I called text price. So you're going to be called text price. And you're going to be text price. Both bold. They both still aren't floating. This thing here. Hmm. Oh, that's not text price, that's text P. Remove class, text price. There we go. And somehow I created a class called text P. Because it's not used anywhere, I'm able to delete it. There we go. All right, people, we're getting there. In media, uh, sorry, margin left, XS, 
All right. Um, again, I loved Flex, so I kind of worked around it. There's lots of compromise that goes in. So rows, I'm going to increase this. This guy here is going to be my generic button. So I didn't want um, uh, to add the you know margin auto to the generic button because I'm going to use it so many times. Okay, this one's going to be called view. What I might do is I know that I'm going to forget to put caps, even though the design kind of says it. So I'm going to say button is actually just going to force everything to be caps so I don't have to worry about it. You, you. That's not going to go up there. I could. Okay. I could have just put, I could put the, um, I could put this in there as well. But I've realized that the designer has, um, you know, and I could make this text price and get it to, well, I could get it to inline block, but it's just going to cause lots of problems because some of these lines are really long. Okay. And it's not going to be long before it pushes it off the edge, especially when I get down to these ones. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Um, that whole div block doesn't have a name. It's called div block two. Okay. This is going to be my div. div. Why isn't it showing? Oh, I'm actually just renaming it. Okay. Um, normally I like to see, uh, you know, the other ones that have named it gives me kind of a, an idea, but because I'm renaming it, they don't appear. So I'm going to say you are div product browse list item. <laughs> Uh, I didn't rename it at all. It's doing something weird. All right, why can't I change it? I don't know. Div. If I remove the class, it's going to break it. If I add another one, I think all I did was create that one, make it flex, and I added some gap of 32. Not sure what went wrong there, but we're back. All right, it's kind of looking like it. I need, no, nope, I need the white background. This rep is gonna have a background of white. And I'm gonna add a combo class of uh, shadow. Okay. Now we're getting there. All right. Cool, I'm happy. You happy? I'm happy, we're getting there. I feel like we're doing stuff. Can you see how like it took us so much quicker to do this page than it did the first one? There's not as much on it, but we are reusing classes. That's what's really cool. I feel like a strong, powerful web designer, okay? When I am just going box shadow, padding left that I've already made. And they're all consistent. Oh, do you feel it? Maybe it's just me. You feel it. All right, let's look at the last page. What are we up to? We're up to this one. Let's do this one. All right, so we're going to work on the template page because this is going to be, you know, lots of them are going to look like this. So we're going to go, yep, and we're going to go over to our, oh, there it is, our products template. Okay, we're going to use our nav and we're going to throw in a, don't add a bookmark. <laughs> I had so many bookmarks. Command E. Uh, we are going to go, let's put in a container. Okay, let's add this container margin top, uh, MD. Let's have a look at my design. So there is a big bit of padding in this one. This one is going to be like a white background. Can't really reuse that white one we had from the last one because I was quite specific about it, right? So let's create a section in here. Um, so let's go to section. I should call uh, just a global class called B uh, color BG white so I can use it over and over. But we're always at the end. So I'm just gonna color the section product with white. Cool, the section here as well. It's going to be um, padding all mid. Nice. Let's add our, we don't actually have to add a list item now, we just add anything because we're in the template. We get to go, uh, let's throw in an image. Uh, image even. Okay, let's connect it to the, not that, um, let's connect it to the main image. Now you got to make sure that the product's coming through, like when you're designing, okay, you got to be mindful that the images might not fit across. So you might end up having to adjust your design just because the images aren't big enough. This one is, and it's going to be a height of, 
height, height, height of three, two, three. I've totally forgot to do the mobile version, haven't I? <laughs> it felt too easy of the last page. We'll do both of them together at the end because we've already started. Okay, I'm not gonna do the height and width in here. Okay, I'm gonna add it to a class. Why uh, in that setting there, you can't do like percentages, you can only do pixels. So I want to add a class called image product pro cut product. Okay, and we're gonna say you are a height of you. Excellent. Width of 100%. Fit in there and fill cover. And middle or top. I'm going to have to go through a few of them. Um, hold down the option. No. <laughs> Hit all the keys and see if you can toggle through the different pages. That's the tabs. Which one is it, Dan? All right. It's shift option. Okay, on a PC, I'm sure it's shift and alt, left and right arrows. You see, I'm just toggling through my images uh, through. You could just click in here. I've only got three. But it's a good way to kind of go through and just check, you know, like uh, images. Do they all look better mid? Which they probably do. That one's not as great. But, you know, rather than going in here and saying, okay, I want it to be fit overflow, you know, to be the top or the bottom. So let's do that one and just use my arrows now. Do I like the top or the bottom? I'm not sure. I think the top. All right, so we've got that. I'm gonna get this over the top. Now, I could have set that as the background um, and that is a way of doing it like we did it on the home page. I want it to be an actual image because I would like it to be um, having alt text, okay? So at the moment, I don't think we have, um, what you can do is you can set up an alt text field in your products. I don't have that, okay? You could. You know, we added this custom field of summary. I'd now go back and add another custom field for alt text and have the client or, you know, they might already have some sort of descriptive that we can use. Okay, and I put a limit count on it, a character count. For the moment though, I'm gonna pretend I've done that and keep going. So I want to put, uh, I want to put this inside of it. So let's put it underneath first. So hitting. Okay, and this is gonna be a hitting, it's gonna be hitting one, and I know it's nothing like it, but I need this to be, you don't have, you don't skip to hitting three on a page. You need at least a hitting one. It tells the browser like, this is the most important thing on this page. So I'm gonna to have to just style hitting one quite extensively for this page. Okay, this is gonna be my hitting one for the product page. Okay, and it's going to be, yep, 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 don't add font. It's gonna be that one. Okay, it's gonna be a size of, here we go, 48. Man, I do that all the time. There's nothing 48 about the number. <laughs> My brain just mixes those up. U divided by 16 rim. Okay, and it's going to be, one is great. Cool, it's gonna to have to be white. Okay, which we can't see. And what I'm gonna do is put that you could put it inside a div and style it. I'm gonna do what I did for that heading with our region. Okay, I'm gonna make the actual, um, this class do a couple of things. I would like it to not be block, because block goes all the way to the edge, which is great for that other thing. Actually, let's put the background in first. So what I'm talking about. See, by default, it's gonna do that. If you switch it to um, overflow, no, what do I want? Come on, brain, layout to inline block, kind of just gets to the edge here. Then I can go grab some padding of a little bit there, a lot there. Make sure I connect that up so it's grabbing it from the name of the product. And kind of look at it. It's not very even anyway, so I don't trust the design and what he's doing. Okay, let's go you. I need to make it, I don't made the wrong color, didn't I? I'm gonna make it black, but transparency is 82%. So in here, I'm gonna type in alpha is 82. Okay, and now I need to move it up. So I'm going to make the section re relative. It's probably gonna be fine looking at this. I still might wanna wrap it up in a div. I'm just gonna hope for the best and say you are going to be okay. So you go position, Absolute. Interesting, huh? 
uh, it pushed off to the edge because it, it can't go anywhere. It's because this thing's holding the space open. But if I make this whole thing relative and then grab this. Oh, is it going to work? That is. Okay. That's why it kind of bunches up. It's just because it can't fit out there and just kind of has to squidge up as small as it can. That looks okay. Remember option shift left and right or shift alt. You have to check if that's right on PC. You might have to start holding keys down. They all fit, luckily. Okay, this one here is part of the add to cart. It's gonna go in there. Cool. I want to be inside the white box. So you go get inside the product. Excellent. Cool. What do we do? I don't want the buy now button. I'll have to probably just talk to the client about that. Like, do we want the buy now button? Is that appropriate? Maybe do some user testing probably and have both. See if there's in a kind of a use case for them. This guy's gonna be not brand. He's gonna be button. Caps, is button meant to be bold? I think button's meant to be bold. Can't select it. You can get out of the way. You, oh, it's a completely different font. <laughs> you see nothing. Okay, I have my buttons actually semi bold and it's from when I was messing around with the fonts earlier on when I was designing it. Bad, I have to go to the design and say, wait, what's wrong? So. I'm going to go and just leave it as is. Um, cool, cool, cool. What else I want to do? I want to style the form a little bit. So I want to push that in and that out. So I can't do, um, yeah, I'm going to have to wrap them up in a div or add a class to this thing. Hmm. I might, because I'm probably going to have to do it again for something else. So I'm going to say you just have a field class of field size. And it's going to be medium. I'm going to guess medium. I'm going to give it, is this going to work? A minimum or maximum maximum width here we go of how much 300 pixels oh nailed it all right um i don't want these on um so label fields i'll need it for this one but not this one you see it here it says select size um i can say choose but i can't change the word size that comes from the product database so you need to go and change the way it's kind of brought in in the CSV because it really, you know, it's pulling from that. All right, uh, what else? We need to play with some spacing. We need to, what else we need to do? Add to cart, add to cart. This button's a lot bigger on this page, okay? It's taller and wider. So I'm going to say you are going to be button, but you are going to be button large, okay? And you are going to have more of everything. You go that way, you go that way, you go this way. And I should go and check, but I'm not going to. Uh, you need your own class. You are going to be text quantity. Okay, and you are going to be the right color. Yep. Failed the uh, contrast ratio, so you're all going to be that color. Triple A. And I need a few other things. So I've got that. What I also need to do, not the add to cart. So above that, if I hit command control E above there, it should squeeze in the uh, text block that is going to be the full description, which is not that long. All right. Okay, is that in? I don't suppose it's in. It's not in. Uh, I'm looking for if it's in flex. Flexbox, because then I can add rows and I can play around with the spacing. The likelihood of them all being the same. Oh, you can see it's much wider on this one. Is it the same as this? It is. What one am I using? Why am I using such a smaller one? My padding medium is actually only 24, isn't it? I wanted padding all to be large. Let's remove that one. Padding large. There we go. So now I can go into here and say section product, you are this one, you're vertical. I can add rows of 32 and that is totally messed up. Because <laughs> um, you are relative to that one. 
Sometimes I'd hit refresh just to see if the absolute goes back or whether it's updated the actual code. Yep, still broken. Uh, so I'm going to go hitting one. You have got spacing or position. Where are you position? There we go. There we go. I don't know why that moved around. I think because I was messing around with flex. Yeah, maybe flex is going to give me problems. Let's have a look. It is. Hmm. I can't undo because I refreshed it. Okay, so I'm actually going to go, let's not flex this box because it might cause problems. And I was going to add my padding in. Let's have a little look. Still the same problem. Oh, it's because it is from the top and the left. Okay, so that's that part of the top there. Oh, his parent went from relative to block. That's why. So it's looking for body because I was messing around with it being flex and I went, oh, I'll be, built, be block again. I don't want it to be, I want it to be block, but I want it to be still be relative. Okay, so that this guy knows where he is at. That's why he moved up. Aha, we did it. Okay, his numbers changed because we changed who is relative to. Mm, he should be relative to the section product, but because I was messing around with stuff, he defaulted to the, the body. So, there we go. He's doing what he's told. I'll just tell him to do weird stuff. That's the one thing with code. It's never broken. It's you, it's doing exactly what you've told it to do, or it's being told to do. He's got to figure out what that is. That's why it was. Oh, that's the wrong shortcut. One, two, three. Cool. I have to change the sizes, but. All right, let's, what else we got in terms of control product? Because I've already got a class applied to it, you are going to get a bottom margin of 32. Because I kind of, it's a bit not enough, but you're also in the wrong spot. I want it above that. Can it go inside the cart? Uh, can go so there's the add to cart button can't go in there okay can it go in there text block can go in so it can't go there can it go it can't there you go never knew that it totally can <laughs> there you go now listen to me so that's down there you're going to have padding top and bottom this one's got a class on it, so I can kind of just sneakily use him as well. I should be adding like pattern, uh, padding top, pattern bottom. I've got these classes already in there. I'm cheating. Okay, this one here. Do I have a margin bottom already? I do. I've got both of them. All right. Quantity can't be there, can it, Dan? There you go. <laughs> Uh, do we have a margin margin top on this one? Margin top, we do. All right, I'm liking it. You don't need the margin at the bottom anymore. Okay, now, yeah, I'm gonna go grab a cup of tea. You wait there and we'll get on to doing the mobile versions. Way longer than an hour, Dan. Okay, one, two, three, four. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so two needs work. Probably just the size of the font. It's got a class. I'm going to use my down arrow. Um, this is my longest of them all. When you're actually in the size, I was trying to use this kind of like left and right shortcut, which is shift option left and right or shift alt. So I'm looking for the longest um, record I've got, and it's this one here. So I'm getting it smallest for this. The rest of it, A OK. -okay. This one here. Again, I'm going to probably just leave it breaking onto two because the font's going to be too small. So I'm just going to say, I'm hoping I can mess with the position of it. Okay, where's my position? Um, there we go, there. And I'm not messing with these other positions, no. And width wise, why is it all the way out there? Mm -hmm. Is it 100%? It's got a minimum, oh, it's got a minimum width, doesn't it? Size wise, doesn't. Hmm, it's in line block. Why? Let's have a little look. Let's go to x-ray mode. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Hmm. I'm not sure why it's kept being kept open. It should snap in there because this text is on the other line. There's something giving it a minimum, minimum width. It's not though. You're not. 
what you can do is kind of just use your up arrow to see the you know click inside of it use your up arrow to see is it the next guy i'm not having a look nothing there next guy nothing there hmm not sure come back to you yeah because i can't think of what went wrong this one uh, yeah this one's probably gonna have to do some stuff what am i gonna do on this one what if what did the designer do let's have a look Oh yeah, just use the small bit of text. <laughs> okay, so let's start with small bit of text. Um, so you, 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 font size, down, down, down. So it does, but it really stays out there, huh? Is that problem solved? It's not really solving it though, is it? It's the longest one, still readable. Um, what I might do for this one is actually come in this way. Is that gonna stay there? It is. Can I add some margin that side? I feel like this is cheating. Totally is cheating. Will it work though is the key. No. Yes, it is. Hmm. Doesn't seem like a good solution. Yep. Yep. And the font here is gonna be smaller. Uh, I'm gonna call two lines okay. Probably there, and I'm going to have to mess with the. Let's get this down to the 16, and to correspond with that, I added that. Oh, that is positioning. I want the padding on it. So size-wise padding. Okay, let's get it down to 16. You're okay. You're okay. The positioning needs to come up a little bit. Just clicking in there and using my arrow keys. So. One, two, three, four. And also this size probably is a bit weird for here. So the height of it in this one is that. So you are going to be height wise of that now, which is messing with my position. I can fix that though. Holding shift goes up in tens. All right. Last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a padding small for this one. So click down here, throw in a div. This div is going to be called padding, and this one's going to be, oh, I've got a medium. I'll make a small one while I'm here. Small, and it's going to be hold shift and, oh, yeah, hold shift and do 16 all around. Excellent. You gone. On this one. Oh, it's not, isn't it? I can't add classes and take them off depending on your breakpoints. You've got to redo the so I'm gonna to have to say it's gonna be weird. Um the container here has got this margin top. The section has got padding large, which is this. If I just add padding um padding small onto it, it overrides it, totally does. But on here. I've also got padding small. You're fine, you're fine, you're fine. There you go. So let's have a look. So section hero. So section product's got padding large, padding small applied to it, but it doesn't actually take effect till here. I assumed it would go all the way up and all the way down because the class is applied. But it's not because I applied it here. These ones I've got padding large. There you go. I learned something. All right, let's get this one to match. Actually, you might just use that kind of styling now. All right, that is that. Let's have a look at the, so let's come out of this one now and let's look at the other page we didn't do for these. So we were starting at the top, two. Okay, it's not working. Okay, so two is going to be either, actually, let's just go down to find the grid. Up, there it is there, I'm looking for, I just kind of click in the middle and use my up arrow until I see the grid icon, there it is. Okay, and I'm gonna say you are just one by one. Done, so one, two, three. Oh, she's getting tight. <laughs> um, how am I gonna combat that? Did I happen to make that? Did, can it be vertical? Can it all be centered? Is this? It is as well, that's flex. <gasps> That was a stroke of luck right there. 
<laughs> uh, and this one here, I'm going to apply the, we've learned that we can do padding. Let's see if this works, padding small all the way around it. That did not apply. Why not? Undo. Let's do padding large in case it's something wrong with it. It is, something's wrong with padding small. What is wrong with padding small? Let's go and find out. So I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna add a div class randomly in somewhere. I'm gonna add PD small. That doesn't actually do anything. So small is going to be 16. I'm not sure why that's, yeah, oh well. No point having it if it's not working. And I'm happy with that one. And on mobile, Actually, let's see if it applied up here as well. Hmm. You yep. collection list wrapper. Now we can disable classes in code. How do you do it in here in Webflow? What I'm gonna do is just go up here to the top one, padding large, I'm gonna set to zero. Actually, I'll set it to zero all the way around. So I'm overriding that class. So you're gonna be zero. And then you are here for that one. And then I'm going to turn it back on for here. So padding large is going to be 32 on this one. And then it should follow along to this one as well. Well, I haven't done this one yet. Okay, so you, you, you. So I've got padding large. We haven't disabled it for these other ones. We just overrode it for these higher ones and then turned it back on for down here. And this one here. It looks okay, but the actual section is going to have PD small. There we go, let's make sure I haven't wrecked these other ones. So you're still PD large, large, and small. That's a cool trick, we've all learned something. All right, heading two on this one. Doesn't have a class. I wanna kind of center it, right, center the text. Can I do it to the whole block? Can I go? Oh, but will it do it to this one as well? Let's have a look. So that looks fine. The heading looks a bit weird here. So I'm gonna say everything inside this div is gonna be aligned center. Does it wreck this one? Nope, does it wreck this one? Nope, nice. So it's only applying from there downwards. Okay, uh, do I want to, I probably wanna mess around with that to match the small, so down to 16. One, let's click off. One, two, three, four. There needs to be some more spacing, but I've had enough. <laughs> you had enough? I've had enough. And um, all right, that's gonna have to be smaller. Okay, it's gonna need a class after all. So let's add it here. Let's call this one heading one on the product page. No, this is the browse page. I'm just gonna call it heading one. And I'm gonna say you. You, this is almost the last thing. This is gonna be the last thing. So the font size down. You can't break up to two lines. And you can be on two lines, but you're gonna be centered. And you're gonna be 1.1 in line height. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's publish this thing. And <laughs> if there's anything wrong with it, we're gonna ignore it. You with me? Oh, please, oh, please, oh, please. No navigation, please hold. All right, Scott T, let's do the navigation. So let's get into the nav. This one here is going to, I'm going inside the symbol, because I want to edit them all. I want you to go to, not an external URL, to the page called home. Perfect. You are going to go to the browse page. So you're going to go to a page called product browse. Open in this tab, thank you very much. Cart knows where he's going. Publish again. This is not gonna, <laughs> we're gonna publish a few times. All right, let's go check it. Um, we're on the right page, we are. Refresh, let's get rid of one of them. Browse. Ooh, we don't have the link done. Okay, we'll do that. Anything else? So we're on the big version, we're on the home page. Home page is broken. Excellent. Let's get to the smaller site. It's working better. So home page is broken. Why is the home page broken? It looks okay in here to me. Hmm, wrong one. Let's look at this one. 
Let's go to the home page. Oh, we did something wrong. Okay, there's a class that we're using. I don't know, let's look at the grid. Did I not put in a grid? I did, so he's in a grid. Edit grid. How did he become just that way? He should be three. I don't know. If I edit this one called collection list, Ah, it's because collection list has been the same name is being used here as well as on another page. All the other pages. Uh, product browse, yeah. Mm. So this one's using the same one. So can we remove the class? I don't think we can, right? Because we, yes, let's call this one collection list on the browse page. Okay, and we're going to say you are now one by auto, done. So we'll leave that one on the home page alone. Mm-hmm, you're working. Let's publish again. <laughs> uh, actually just preview in here before we go too far I'm publishing. So we're gonna go browse T, working. Let's go into one of these guys and it's working. It's not much on the page, I realize. Otherwise we'd be here for a million years. So I think like that thing is the only other bit. Oh, I think that's not bad. That is not bad. I'm gonna have to go test it on my mobile as well. Okay, let's fix that and I'll show you a way of testing on your mobile on your desktop. Okay, you should just send it to your phone, but you can't see that. So let's fix that. So your, so there's this option you've got here for current current page that we're on has a style of blue. It's kind of like a default one. Okay, that comes from old school HTML. So I'm gonna say nav button current is actually going to be color of white as well. Preview, you. So that doesn't go blue, that doesn't go blue. Doesn't go blue, ha, ah, ha. Ah like we might be there let's preview that thing on mobile and then we'll call it a day and it is a day <laughs> i started this thing in the morning and it's the afternoon and uh, i stopped for lunch in there can you tell when my mood probably changed at some stage <laughs> when i get hangry and uh afterwards when i've had lots of food all right so let's publish it update this one and what you can do on chrome at least i'm not sure on other browsers you can right click and say inspect Okay, and up down the bottom here, you can say, show me on, see this little icon here? Okay, yours might be somewhere else on the page. I think it's on the, maybe the right by default. You can say, show me on a Pixel 5, okay? You can see my viewport height's not quite right on that one. We might just put 100% in so it fills it completely, or maybe even smaller so that you can know that you can scroll. Sometimes that can be useful as well, that you've only got like 80%, but done, you're done. I'm done. High five, make it to the end. You win an award. We both win awards. We both got here. I hope you learned something. I don't know. Felt like it was uh, an important part of the end of the course to tie it all together and I don't know, see how the different parts connect. And hopefully also you saw that there's the right way of doing things and then there's the it's just working and it's fine and I've tested it on different browsers and it will do. Plus a lot of pushback to the designer. So there's a lot of things that, especially with the name length, is important to see, okay? Especially for the designer, I know now, you know, when I'm designing it, uh, that I should be looking for longer titles. So it's great when you are designing and developing the site. But yeah, that is it. Thanks for coming along on the ride along. I hope you enjoyed it. And yeah, I'll see you in another video real soon. Bye. All right, that is the end of the ride along. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, if you think it's worth a like, give it a like. Uh, subscribe to the channel as well. I've got lots of other Webflow stuff here. Um, but if you are like, yeah, I want to learn Webflow properly, uh, check out my Webflow Essentials course. This, this video is kind of like pulled up out of that. So it is part of the skills that you will learn. You'll learn everything you need to know in the Webflow Essentials course. Link for that below. Um, I've also got courses for uh, Figma Essentials and XD Essentials as well. Kind of something you might be interested in as well. All right, that is it. Come join me in the course. It's good fun. But for now... I'm going to say goodbye.